till now we have looked at what are dislocation interaction and now also we have looked at what are dislocation intersections now we'll see how these interactions and intersections of dislocation will lead to strain hardening stages in fcc single crystal so before doing that we know this relation that is sigma is equal to k epsilon to the power n where n is a strain hardening exponent and we have also defined strain hardening grade that is theta equal to d sigma upon d epsilon we have also found out this relation that is d sigma upon d epsilon is equal to n sigma upon e that is a strain hardening rate in terms of strain hardening exponent stress and strain also we have seen these relations where the shear stress to move a dislocation when you have a dislocation density rho is given as tau c is equal to alpha gp into under root of rho and we have seen that plastic strain is proportional to dislocation density so when i increase a plastic strain or when i keep on deforming material the dislocation density increases and this increase in dislocation density may in turn increases the shear stress to move the dislocations so we have seen all these things now when i am talking about shear stress and shear strain let's plot tau versus gamma for single crystal now when i am talking about single crystal you will remember a schmidt law and for an elastic regime you can say you have you can get this tau as tau y and this tau y i can write it as tau crss let me write it down so you can consider this tau y as to be tau crss now this we have looked at looked at when we discussed about schmidt law now if i deform this material or keep deforming or when i enter into the plastic regime as i increase the plastic strain how this tau that is plastic stress or flow stress vary for single crystal abscess material we'll be looking at that so typically you get the variation of tau with respect to gamma that is when i increase a plastic strain the shear stress varies in this way and here i can see there are three regions which i can clearly mark in this plastic deformation that is this region this region and this region i call it as three stages stage 1 stage 2 and stage 3 and let's mark this d tau upon d gamma which is a strain hardening grade so let's find out a strain hardening grade and based on the strain hardening grade we can mark this three stages that is stage 1 stage 2 and stage 3 and what can be the typical observations here so you can see here d tau by d gamma is very small that means as i go on increasing the plastic strain it is not appreciable change in the shear stress so you have very small hardening coefficient now when i look at stage 2 it has d tau by d gamma is equal to g upon 300 which is much higher strain hardening rate you get in the stage 2 as compared to stage 1 and stage 3 and this stage 2 strain hardening rate is more or less constant strain hardening rate i am talking as and it is equal to g upon 300 and the variation of this shear stress with respect to shear strain is somewhat linear and you can see that there is a decrease in the strain hardening rate as i enter into stage 3 so there is a decrease of the strain hardening rate So these are the three stages which we can mark based on strain hardening rate that is d tau, tau upon d gamma Now let's look at these stages in much more detail Let's look at the stage 1 So for abscess materials we have 12 slip systems and 5 are independent In stage 1 what exactly is happening you have a deformation mainly on primary slip systems so in stage 1 you have a deformation only on a primary slip system and thus the dislocation move on primary slip system and this stage is also called as a easy guide stage and here you will have very little strain hardening that is d tau upon d gamma is equal to g upon 3000 now let me explain it to you how this happens so let's consider you have only a primary slip plane 
like this and you have dislocations on this and this dislocation can move freely because there, there is not much of a dislocation available or moving on this primary slip planes and thus this dislocation can easily glide okay. so there will not be much interaction between dislocations so this dislocation when they form on this primary slip planes they can easily glide on this slip plane and thus this stage will not have much of strain hardening and this stage is called as an easy glide now let's look at a tm microgrop showing this easy glide motion so you can see here that the dislocations are moving in this direction and these dislocations are moving on majorly on a primary slip systems or primary slip planes there is not much resistance to the motion of this dislocation and thus there is very little strain hardening in the stage 1 now let's look at stage 2 so before moving to stage 2 what exactly happens at the end of stage 1 you have other slip systems which comes into picture such as secondary slip systems so if i look at tau versus gamma if there is only one slip system operating you get a tau versus gamma as this plot if i have multiple slip systems like more than one two slip systems i get tau versus gamma as this plot in this way so here you don't have a, any first stage or the stage one here doesn't occur when you have two slip systems similarly if you have more slip systems or more slip systems which are participating in the plastic deformation that is here in this case i consider it as six slip systems so you have this tau versus gamma variation in this fashion so you can see that the stage one is absent when there are two or more than slip systems and that is what happens when, when I consider a stage 2. In stage 2 what happens that the deformation will be on primary slip systems and also it occurs on the secondary or a conjugate slip systems and thus there will be a dislocation interactions. So if this we have seen interactions between dislocations when the dislocation move on primary and secondary slip systems they intersect they interact and thus there will be a dislocation interaction there also will be dislocation reactions which takes place in stage 2 such as lommel cotterel locks we have seen this so let me mark it over here so let's say you have this slip systems so let's say we have this dislocations on this slip system so this is let's say secondary and let's say this is a primary and this you have dislocations on this secondary and primary slip systems and this dislocation move and they they can react with each other and they can form a lock we have seen this lock such as lomer cotter locks let me mark it over here so this dislocations move in this direction this dislocation can move here and they can form some locks here when when they react so you get longer quarter locks also there can be a dislocation tangles and formation of dislocation cell structures we'll be looking at this when we see stage 3 also and there will be a very high increase in the dislocation density when there is a stage 2 occurring and there can be operation of frank rate sources because we know the frank rate sources provide a dislocations or uh, these are the dislocation sources so they provide more dislocations which can participate in the deformation and thus there is a high strain hardening rate at stage 2 and this strain hardening rate is evaluated to be as d tau upon d gamma is equal to g upon 300 what exactly is happening you can see here you can see the formation of frank rate sources and they operate and they multiply the dislocations so you have a dislocation multiplication over here which is happening because of the operation of frank rate sources now when such kind of dislocation the dislocation density increases they interact with each other they tangles and eventually forms dislocation cell structures 
So here you can see that this dislocation multiply and they tangle and they interact or intersect each other and thus they lead to very high strain hardening or here you can see there is a tremendous increase in the dislocation density and this increase in the dislocation density will increases the tau which is required to move the dislocations and thus they lead very high strain hardening rate in stage 2. So you can see here that these are dislocations got tangled, dislocations are making locks or dislocation are multiplying here. So in stage 2 we get very high strain hardening rate which is g upon 300. Now let's look at stage 3. In stage 3 what happens you have a dislocations which can cross lip because we are increasing the plastic strain and this dislocation can cross lip. So what kind of dislocation can cross lip? You have screw dislocations and this screw dislocation can cause cross lip and cause a dynamic recovery too. What do I mean by dynamic recovery? So this dislocation can cross lip and they can annihilate each other and when they annihilate each other there will be a recovery and this is happening during deformation that is why it is called as dynamic recovery thus the cross slip leads to dislocation annihilations and thus the stress required to move dislocation will decrease when i go on increasing the plastic strain there will be some other mechanisms which come or which can operate at stage 3 such as dislocation dissociation and thus it can also lead to decrease in the strain hardening rate and there is a decrease in the strain hardening rate because of these mechanisms. So we have dislocation interaction theories which have been put by Taylor, Seeger and Friedel, Kuhlman, Wistow. So in Taylor proposed that the strain hardening or work hardening is, dis is due to dislocation interactions. We have seen this relation and this is nothing but a Taylor hardening or a Taylor equation. It is tau c is equal to tau naught plus alpha gp into under root of rho. So this tau naught is nothing but a stress required when there is no dislocation present. So you can write this relation in this way and this is called as a Taylor hardening equation. Seeger and Friedel propose that dislocation pileups at obstacles such as normal quarter locks. So you have locks, normal quarter locks and they resist the moment of other dislocations on the slip planes and thus they contribute to the strain hardening and this explains the stage 2. While Kilman will stop such as that when dislocation density increases they form a dislocation cells. Let me explain it to you. So when there is an increase in the dislocation density so you have a cells of this dislocation forming. in the grain so these are all let's say these are all edge dislocations which may align and then they form something kind of a cell structure and this strain structure results in the strain hardening or increasing the strength of a material so in stage 3 you also call it as a parabolic hardening stage so you have cross slip occurring let me explain it to you again. So we have cross slip occurring from one plane to another plane. So we have seen the dislocation can come here and then they can cross slip on this. So this is another slip plane. So you have cross slip occurring of dislocations. And this cross slip can cause dislocation annihilation if there is a negative dislocation over here or let's say a dislocation of opposite sign it will it will attract each other and annihilate each other and thus the dislocation density decreases and in turn the strain hardening rate also comes down in stage 3. So we have seen all these three stages that is stage 1, stage 2 and stage 3 and mind you this is for a single crystal or a single crystal abscessy material. So if we have polyslip that is polycrystalline material. So we have 
many slip systems coming into the pictures so polycrystalline material you can have a poly slip which is like many slip systems coming into the picture and will not get tau versus gamma in this way rather you get tau versus gamma something like this so we have seen this when you have poly slip occurring that is more slip systems taking part or uh, more slip system participating in the plastic deformation you get tau versus gamma in this way so you will not have stage 1 you will have direct stage 2 and stage 3 so with this i would like to tell you that kulman winstrop she has proposed many dislocation theories or interaction theories you can google it and find out more information on her so with this i will stop here